Hello and welcome to today's video. Although there wasn't a Supercross race this weekend, we were still blessed with great racing overseas in the MXGP Motocross World Championship. So we'll take a look at some news stories with that and uh, kind of race review in general. Uh, we'll also cover a couple stories from the U.S., such as an injury update on Christian Craig. Then we have Blake Baggett being back on the bike for the first time in three and a half years. Uh, and then we're going to look at who will fill Adam Cianciarillo's spot on Monster Energy Kawasaki for pro motocross this summer. All right, let's start off with the United States side of things. Uh, so we had a bit of a surprise clip drop yesterday, late last night, from the El Chupacabra, Blake Baggett. Uh, the former Rocky Mountain KTM rider hasn't ridden since the Thunder Valley National in 2020. He was out the rest of the year due to a hand injury, and that kind of ended this season along with some drama going on with that team and the owners, the Butler brothers. Uh, there were allegations of back pay from the team, close to $400,000 if my memory serves me correctly. Uh, that's kind of all we know as they did have a court battle and the rest is under a NDA, non-disclosure agreement. So we never really got to get the full story of the situation, obviously due to all the legal stuff going on with that. So Anyway, the past few years, Baggett has spent most of his time with his family and raising his little boy, Breaker Baggett, who is already racing a 50cc. Uh, so his social feed has pretty much consisted of family events and teaching his son how to ride for the past three and a half years. That's basically it. So we were kind of surprised when he dropped a clip yesterday uh, that read, quote, 1,282 days, it's been a minute. And in that clip, it was him riding a bike. So, kind of surprises all. Uh, here's that clip. Don't mind the silence. It didn't come with audio. It just had copyrighted music playing over it, so I have to mute it. Anyway, here's the clip. It's kind of crazy to see him back on the bike. Gotta say, he doesn't look half bad either. Uh, so the question is, will he be returning to racing? Well, let's look at the info we have thus far. Uh, Pro Motocross did repost this clip, welcoming him back on all platforms. Uh, and they said they were excited that he's back. So that kind of leaves me wondering if he's going to be racing, if they know something we don't. Uh, he's on a factory edition Husqvarna. Not the actual factory bike by the looks of it. It did have a stock exhaust and such, just as the factory edition comes. Um, but he was seen with Kenny Day from Fox Gear and Aaron Kane from Oakley Goggles. Now, they could have been there just as friends to give him some free gear, I guess. But I'm more inclined to believe that they are there because he signed a deal with them. And they're letting him test out new products. Now, I have no info on this now, uh, but as all this happened last night, um, but as more info comes out, I will let you guys know as it comes out, if any more information comes out. And I really hope Blake Baggett is coming back for promo to cross. It'd be like reliving 2022 with Dungey. Now, there was one other thing. Uh, Baggett's wife posted something as well, and I do not have it in front of me. But she said something of the likes of, don't give up on your dreams. And they were thankful for all the backing that they have. So that leaves me wondering if they're putting together their own program to race this summer. It, it just looks, it doesn't look like he's just out there riding for fun. It looks like he's coming back for promo to cross. Let me know what you guys think about this.
All right, before we get into the next story, let me tell you about our sponsor, Blood Lubricants. Blood is premium oils, lubricants, anything you would need from your motocross bike, your UTV, or even your daily driver. Their newest product is Clutch RX Engine Oil. Why choose this over basic engine oil or basic brands, you may be asking? Well, Blood's Clutch RX improves the lifespan of your clutch, reduces slippage, and reduces wear on your engine. So if you're going to change the oil on your bike, which we all have to do, Buy the best for your bike. Make that engine last longer. For a limited time, you can use my code TMN25 for 25% off site-wide on bloodlubricants.com. Links in the description. Go check them out. All right, next, let's take a look at an update on Christian Craig, the Rockstar Energy Husqvarna rider. Christian Craig has been dealing with an injury or with injuries all year. Uh, and even last year as well for most of it. He only made it six rounds this year before he dropped out of the series, citing elbow problems. And his performance in those races he attended were not what he was aiming for, that's for sure. I think his best was 12th. Uh, we know he can do better than that. So four weeks ago now, Craig had, I think, his fourth surgery done on his elbow. He had to have this done due to his elbow popping in and out of the socket, uh, causing a lot of pain. This surgery added stabilization to the joint to prevent that. Uh, so how is Craig doing one month after surgery? Well, we finally got an update from him and an update on his condition. Uh, before the weekend, Craig took to socials to give an update saying, quote, starting to see the finish line with this elbow. I'm past the four week mark and have been doing everything in my power to get this behind me and back behind the gate. If all goes to plan, I should be back on the bike within a couple of weeks and prepping for outdoors. It's awesome to hear. I can't wait to see him back on the bike. It sucks to see him out. He's such an incredible rider and such a cool guy to be hanging out with in the pits and watching on TV. Uh, so hopefully he can do enough therapy on it and get enough time in on the bike to be the Christian Craig. We all know he can be in pro motocross this summer. So let's get it, Craig. All right, let's now talk about the vacant spot on Monster Energy Kawasaki that was left by Adam C. and Cerullo. As you all know, we got confirmation of Adam C. and Cerullo's retirement, so there will be an open spot on Monster Energy Kawasaki's 450 squad for the entire Pro Motocross series. Uh, this left the internet room for a lot of conspiring. Uh, who will fill this spot is the question that everyone's asking. Well, I think you know as well as I do, there is one in particular that killed it last season on a stock Kawasaki that we'd all love to see race on the factory team, and that's what most people on the internet are believing who will be riding for uh, Kawi, and that is Ty Masterpool. I was hoping that this opening would kind of open the door for him to a factory ride, but unfortunately, it's looking like that's not a possibility. Steve Mathis of Pulp MX was asked about this, and he has some insider info, as he always does. Uh, he's a really reliable source, so I believe what he says. Um, Steve said about this, quote, doesn't sound like Cowie is going to get a second rider for a 450 motocross this summer, in case you were wondering. This is really unfortunate, and I'd love to know why Cowie would leave an open spot on their team for the entire season take all that equipment across the country just for Anderson. It seems wild to me, but factory teams decisions really make sense. They're just there for advertising for Kawasaki. So I don't think there'd be much in it for them except to save money. Now, to be fair, the reason nobody signed master pool yet on a factory team is most likely due to his high rate of injury throughout his career. When he was on star Yamaha, most of it was injured uh, and his poor experience and performance in Supercross. Um, yes, he does fantastic in pro motocross, but most races of the year, as you know, are Supercross. Uh, so with his best finish being uh, 16th on a 450, I don't think that's going to cut it for a factory ride yet. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this in the comments down below. Should Masterpool get the ride? All right, guys, before I move on to the next story, issue number eight of my magazine was just sent to the printers last night. So if you are a MagPass subscriber, expect to get your copy in the mail in the coming weeks. If you're not a subscriber, head to my website, themxnetwork.com, the link's in the description, and become a subscriber to get all copies for the year. If you want just one copy, issue number eight is up for pre-order now, uh, and the rest of my copies that are still available are up as well. So thanks to all of you who already have bought it. If not, go grab one. All right, let's now take a look at the MXGP of Sardinia. I'm going to go through a general race report, and then there's a few stories from the race that I want to take a look at afterwards. So let's start with the MX2 class. Neston Husqvarna Factory Racing's red plate holder Kai DeWolf and his teammate Lucas Kunin had dominated the timesheets leading up to the racing. Although the Dutchman had extended his championship lead with victory in the Ram qualifying race, the Red Bull KTM rider Sacha Kunin took his third hole shot of the season in race one on Sunday and looked intent on keeping the lead for longer than before. But he couldn't resist the unstoppable force of DeWolf, who launched his machine off the finish line, jumped further than Sacha to lead at the start of lap three. 
It was looking ominous for the rest until Lucas made a swift pass on his brother during lap four and proceeded to reel in his teammate. Red Bull KTM Factory Racing's Andrea Adamo battled with the Red Bull Gas Gas team leader Simone Langenfelder as Sacha Kunin fell from third on lap nine. The position was gratefully taken by Camden McClellan, having his best weekend yet for Monster Energy Triumph Factory Racing. 20 minutes into the race, we saw some mistakes creeping into the leader's riding as his teammate drew near and on lap 13, De Wolf ran slightly high on the pit lane corner, giving Lucas the half chance he needed to fire pass without a second invitation. He then set some blazing lap times to score his first GP race win of the season. McClellan stayed in third, holding off the charge from Monster Energy Yamaha rider T-Ball Benestant. The Frenchman dropped the bike on the last lap. However, he would finish 10th as Adamo and Langenfelder inherited 4th and 5th. DeWolf looked a little more concerned in the start line of race one, but while Sacha Kunin again grabbed the whole shot ahead of Adamo and Langenfelder, Kai pulled a stunning move around turn two to catapult himself past all of them into the lead. Mikel Harup was having no such fun, picking up his triumph in the first corner as he did in race one. The Dane would recover with an eventual ninth place finish. Lucas Kunin saw his teammate start to disappear and swiftly dispatched both his brother and Langenfelder to move into second by the start of the first full lap. Although the German did resist by briefly moving back ahead, Sacha dropped the bike from fourth at the 10-minute mark, promoting Adamo, who chased after Langenfelder again. Incredibly, Lucas got close to Kai, but finally pushed just a little too hard and hit the floor in a banked right-hand corner. Langenfelder was promoted briefly, but again got passed by the Belgian before the finish. He would also lose third to the charging Andre Adamo, but the Italian made a mistake, as I will mention later, uh, in pit lane and blasted down the back of the mechanics area to maintain his position. The rules state that a rider must come to a stop at some point in pit lane, so this move led to a disqualification of the reigning champion. This left Langenfelder third in the race ahead of Adamo's teammate Liam Everts and McClellan, whose fifth place was enough for third overall, making it the second podium for Triumph in their first three rounds. DeWolf took the checkered flag 11 seconds clear of his teammate, which gave him the overall victory once more. Lucas Kunin had to be satisfied with his first overall podium of the season and a move up to third in standings. Langenfelder's fourth overall leaves him 29 points behind DeWolf and the closest in the championship. All right, on to the MXGP class. As in Saturday's qualifying race, Jorge Prado was beaten to the whole shot line in race one by Kawasaki Racing's Jeremy Sewer. But a quick inside move into the second corner saw the reigning world champion back in his usual leading position. Uh, Honda HRC's Tim Geyser made a quick move past the Swiss rider in turn four, and Paul's Jonas of standing contract Honda threw into third at the same time. The two Honda riders set after chasing the red plate holder, while last year's winner, Red Bull KTM's Jeffrey Hurlings, had started outside the top five and had to haul his way through the pack. This he did to great effect, reaching third by lap six, but at that point, the leading pair were too far to catch. Seward fell dramatically after five minutes, but would recover to finish 11th, while his teammate Roman Fevre consigned to the far outside of the start gate after being una unable to finish Saturday's race. He had to work his, a work his way up to sixth place with a series of passes. Jonas slipped to fifth behind factory fanix Glenn Koldenhoff in the closing laps. At this time, it looked like Geyser was closing in on Prado, getting within two seconds of the Spaniard, but was never allowed to get closer as the champ took yet another race win. Race two again saw Seawer fast out of the gate, but Prado was right there immediately just edge ahead over the whole shot line. Hurlings railed around the Kawasaki man in turn two, and now it was the bullet who had the task of challenging Prado. Behind him, JM Honda's uh, fill-in rider Tim Edberg was briefly up into fourth before Jonas and Geyser pushed past them early on. Fevre had to charge once more, nearly crashing in a dramatic moment where he nearly collided with JK Racing's uh, Isaac Gifting on the takeoff of one of the biggest jumps on the track. After 16 minutes, Hurlings had to get within striking distance of Prado and was hoping to uncork some of his old magic, but the Dutchman just pushed the front end too hard in a left-hand corner and was suddenly on the ground. Geyser accepted the gift of second place, which kept the championship damage to a minimum, but the leader was off the hook and cruised to his fourth straight GP race win. The Slovenian Tim Geyser fell on the final lap, but he had enough time to pick himself up and still claim second ahead of Hurlings, Jonas Fevra, and Monster Energy Factory Yamaha's Calvin Volandrin. Calvin's guest teammate of the weekend was the fill-in rider, Todd Kellett. He ran as high as 13th before a small crash, put him back to 16th at the flag for his Grand Prix points since 2021. Prado's 41st career Grand Prix now uh, win now puts him 17 points clear of Geyser, and Hurling's first podium of the season has moved him up to third in standings. Will the strong fan support that Geyser always gets at the MXGP of Trentino spur him on to challenge the champion next weekend? He certainly needs to start clawing the points back, as does anyone else 
with their eyes on the title. Prado's just been dominant thus far into the season, so he's going to be hard to beat. All right, that's all I have for the kind of race report. I kind of want to put it into one video uh, in the middle of the week, so that's what I'm going to start doing and see if you guys like it. Let me know if you like it or not. Uh, anyway, before we move on to the stories from this weekend that I want to talk about in MXGP, let me first show you guys our merch. I never thought I'd have merch. I got a lot of messages asking if I had merch and people that wanted to buy it, so I figured, hey, let's do it. Now, I didn't chintz out on this stuff. The company I go through to make my stuff allows you to choose which factory you want. I selected only the best, the highest quality. I'm not going to sell cheap stuff like most people do. All of my products are quality made, and they are all embroidered. So go check it all out, bmxnetwork.shop. It's all going to be long-lasting, comfortable clothes. Uh, links in the description. Go check it out. All right, one of the stories I wanted to talk about from this weekend's MXGP was an interesting one, that's for sure, and that is a bike exploding. Uh, the first story to take away from this weekend's MXGP of Sardinia was a bit of an odd one, uh, and that was an explosion on track. Now, the whole bike didn't literally explode, but his radiator did just after it died from overheating on the last lap of race two. The rider uh, was Frenchman Benoit Paterel riding for Da Bates' Yamaha team. Unfortunately for Paterel on the last lap of the second moto, his Yamaha died, and as he was sitting on it, kind of just angry that the bike died, uh, his radiator seemed to blow up. Uh, if you haven't seen it, it's wild. Here's the clip. Now, luckily, he was okay. He didn't even get a burn, so that UFO race gear must be pretty protective. Anyways, today he gave us an update saying, quote, We are far from the goals, but we are working hard to be better each weekend. Second moto was better. I was 15th until this incident in the last lap. Luckily, I'm not burnt. Glad to see he's okay. Hopefully he can make a comeback next weekend in the Italian GP. Hopefully it's less explosive for him as well. All right, the next story I wanted to talk about was the defending MX2 world champion, Andrea Adamo. Uh, he got disqualified in Moto2. Now, he did have a halfway decent day, but this led to a poor overall finish. Um, they didn't show it on the broadcast, but he did go off track near the pit lane on the sec in the second moto, and he drove through the pit lane to get back on track. Uh, apparently, that is an infringement of the rules. This wasn't like the deal in Supercross where you get a measly two-position penalty. No. They struck down hard on Adamo and completely disqualified him from the second moto for not stopping in the pits. I guess the World Championship rules a read that if you go through the pit lane, you must stop. I think it's kind of ridiculous, but what does Adamo think? Um, he said in a post-race interview, quote, Pretty good weekend for me. I struggled on Saturday to find the right setup, but on Sunday we made some adjustments, and I had two good and solid motos to go for three, which would have been normally third overall. Unfortunately, near the end of the second moto, I went wide and off the track, and the only way to rejoin was to go through the pit lane. The rules say that you have to stop if you go through it. I thought it was a bit too much to disqualify me. Zero points from the second moto, and not how I intended, or not how I wanted to end the day, even if it was going quite well. I'm super happy to go back to Arco now in just a few days. Now, I think it's pretty crazy to disqualify him. I mean, yeah, he did kind of break the rules, but if he falls off track and rides slowly and safely through the pit lane, I don't see how it would be a problem. But I guess if that's written into the, into the rule book, that's what they got to do. Uh, they got to set the precedent of following the rules to the T, so I understand that. But maybe this is something they can look at in the future on possibly changing this rule. I don't know. But it's been a rough start to the season for the defending champ. He has a lot of work to do in order to battle with the likes of Kaido Wolf and Lucas Kunin. Those guys seem to be pretty dominant thus far. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. Let me know your thoughts on all these topics. How do you feel about Jorge Prado's dominance in MXGP, MXGP thus far? How about Kaido Wolf rising to the occasion this year? Uh, what about in the U.S.? Will Blake Baggett return this summer? Let me know your opinions down below. Thank you guys for watching and or listening, and I will see you guys in the next one.